right, guys, welcome back to another video. Hope everyone had a great weekend. We have some interesting stuff here to kick off the week. We will start off here talking about Xbox, the Tokyo Game Show, which I think uh, they were potentially not going to show up to this year. It looks like they are going to have their own showcase, plus many other things to get into, like GTA 6 maybe being delayed. But we will get into all that first. If you do enjoy this content, you do enjoy Xbox news and gaming news, please consider hitting the like, subscribe, share the video. Also check out my Spotify link is in the description. So Tokyo Game Show 2024 is around the corner. September 26 is when the showcase will take place and Xbox's showcase will be at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So pretty early for us on the, this side of the world, but it is going to be happening. Xbox is going to be showing off a bunch of stuff and lots of things coming to Xbox Game Pass, which is the exciting part about it all. They do say here specifically as to what you can expect for the lineup of what they will be showcasing is that they will share content from Xbox Game Studios, Activision, Blizzard Entertainment, and Bethesda. So obviously all of the studios under Xbox. And they say they'll also showcase an exciting lineup of games from third party partners, primarily based in Japan and across Asia, including games coming to Xbox Game Pass. And to me, that is the more exciting part about this showcase, because I feel like with the first party studios with Blizzard, Bethesda, Activision, all that stuff. It's just going to be stuff we already know that is coming out. They're going to show deeper dives into those games. I would be surprised if we got like a brand new announcement of a game that has not been unveiled yet. But it would be cool if they did that as well. But when it comes to Japan, they are looking at ways to attract those gamers into the ecosystem. And one way to do that is to make partnerships with Asian developers, with Japanese developers, and get those games directly launched onto Game Pass day one. That will be the biggest way, I think, for people to get into the ecosystem. Because you look at the console sales in Japan, it'll never be able to compete with PlayStation and Nintendo. No matter how many amazing first party exclusives they tried to put on only in japan we've seen this already with the xbox 360 they had exclusive games only in japan still did not compete in on any level with playstation or with nintendo so that is kind of out of the question and xbox has obviously been thinking of other ways to attract gamers into their ecosystem and that is getting their games on the platforms that people play they're also getting game pass and cloud gaming having people be able to play and access these games via mobile so that's why it's very important for these third-party partner showcases where they show hey we're getting these games that you guys want to play and you're going to be able to play them on our platform and in xbox game pass and in fact some games that potentially will be dropping over to xbox and hopefully they will be showing off at the tgs showcase here this year that is the basically of all the final fantasy games the ones that have skipped xbox at least so far you have uh, jess corden reporting this that these games from square enix will be coming to xbox he's not sure when but this includes games like final fantasy 7 remake Final Fantasy, the Pixel Remaster, as well as Final Fantasy 16. And then you have Midori, or previously Midori, now Ryan from the Bronx here on X, saying that Jess Corden is correct, and he first mentioned this back in June, specifically saying he's claimed that Xbox and Square Enix will strengthen their relationship with every Final Fantasy game coming to Xbox at some point, including the Pixel Remasters. Now, we don't know... When these will come in, what this means, will they be in Game Pass? Will they just be dropping onto the platform? I'm guessing they'll probably just, at least most, a couple of them will just be dropping on the platform. Maybe they strike a deal with one of them to get into Game Pass. But Final Fantasy 16 is my guess of the one that will be coming over sooner rather than later. Pixel Remaster as well. And then you have Final Fantasy 7. That's one that I've always kind of been skeptical of as how is Xbox going to get this over there before the trilogy is finished because i would have assumed that playstation signed that console exclusivity deal for the entire three games of final fantasy 7 remake but maybe that's not the case and maybe these games will start dropping on to xbox before the trilogy does finish maybe they come out and say hey the first one is going to be coming over to xbox in 2025 the second one once the third game releases and then the third one after that so if you are a fan of those games Look out for that, or maybe they'll even just do an entire trilogy release at some point where they drop onto the service or drop into Xbox. So cool stuff there. I mean, we know what Square Enix 
what their deal is about right now. They're done with console exclusivity. They're done with PlayStation deals because they have not paid off. Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy 7 Remake just did not do well enough for them to want to continue those exclusivity deals. So they're going to be putting their games in as many places as possible on Xbox. They're obviously going to be preparing for the Nintendo Switch 2 to try to get their games on that as well because obviously missing out on Nintendo, especially in Japan, is a huge hit for a company like Square Enix. So that's where they're going forward. And I think it's just better for gamers getting their games in more places. So pretty excited for that showcase and we'll see what happens there on September 26th. Then we have some more information on Starfield Shattered Space, which is set to release here in just a couple of weeks on September 30th. And Bethesda has shared more info. Here is what it is. They say we have much more coming beginning with our first story expansion, Shattered Space, releasing September 30. Here's a bit of what you can expect when Shattered Space launches. Over 50 new locations to discover and explore across Varunkai. New grenades to craft that stem from organic material you gather, and they say it's gross. Formidable new enemies. Be on your guard for redeemed and vortex horrors. You haven't seen the last of Zealots, Spacers, and the Crimson Fleet as you explore the planet. Be on the lookout for those taking advantage of the situation. So that's pretty cool. I mean, new locations, over 50 new locations to go out and explore and just discover the world, but also new enemies. That'll be a fun thing to jump into here with Shattered Space. And it's looking like it's more of a horror style of expansion and DLC. And I think it'll get a lot of people jumping back into the game itself. So pretty excited here for Starfield, the Shattered Space expansion. We have so many good games coming out for the end of this year. RPGs, especially if you like those types of games, lots to look forward to. And I will definitely be playing Shattered Space when it does launch. Okay, let's talk about this because this could be some pretty big news. If it is true right now, this is just a rumor. But this comes via Liam on X, who staff at GTA base has 10.9k followers and mostly does things related to Rockstar games and puts this out. Exclusive. GTA 6 has been internally delayed by Rockstar Games and they've already decided on the early to mid 2026 release window. PC is planned for about 12 to 18 months after the console launch and this information comes from multiple devs across two studios and people are are wondering if this is a troll because this did drop on a saturday which you don't really get very much new news on the weekend it's basically just kind of maybe expansions of stuff that's happened over the week or some random thing from a podcast that happens on the weekend that comes out but this people are asking dropping this on a saturday night without an actual source is crazy this better be a troll attempt bro and he says it's not And he continues on here and says, considering I'm 99.9% positive on this information, it will be a miracle. And basically that the take is wrong. He's saying there's like no chance that this take will be wrong. So that's crazy. We'll see. I mean, it's not officially been confirmed, but GTA 6 being delayed to 2026 changes a lot in the console space because it's not releasing on PC day one. And I think one of the biggest things for Rockstar and GTA six was getting it ready to release on the PlayStation five pro, which we should be getting an announcement relatively soon. Take advantage of that hardware because this will be a massive game and sign a marketing deal with PlayStation to push the PS five pro. But if they were delay this until mid 2026, that the rumors are true about Xbox starting the next generation in 2026, this could be huge for Xbox to try to sway Rockstar and GTA to get those marketing rights for the next generation as a launch game on the next gen Xbox platform, which will be obviously more powerful than the PlayStation 5 Pro. I'm expecting it to be significantly more powerful than the PS5 Pro, which will go ahead and help GTA even more, GTA 6 to be running better than what it's going to be running out here on these current generation of consoles. Like, will there be a 60 FPS performance mode on the Series X and the base PS5, or will it all just be in 30 frames per second? How will the image quality look? All that stuff is yet to be discussed. I mean, Rockstar puts out very high quality products, so they'll be able to optimize these perfectly for, I think, every platform that it is going to be released on. But they obviously want to get the most out of this game. And I think the next generation of consoles will get them way more out of this game. And they're obviously going to release a version for the next gen consoles, whether it comes out on this gen in 2025 or not. They're definitely going to be putting a version on the next gen consoles and then resell it. So 
Maybe that's what they're looking at. Maybe they're saying, hey, this is what the plans are for the next Xbox and even the next PlayStation. Let's delay it until that comes out. And then we'll release it across all of the platforms and give the best versions to these next generation consoles. We'll see what happens here. But again, not confirmed, not confirmed at all. This is just a tweet here. So it is still a rumor. And it comes to uh, GTA 6. We're seeing this, uh, this story pop up. I think it's kind of I mean, it's not a big deal. I don't. I think this is kind of a non-story. But anyways, it says the Rockstar Games reportedly offers seventy five hundred dollars to use a band song in Grand Theft Auto Six, and it's a low amount you could say for a game that makes as much money as it does make. But this is kind of ridiculous because this person got offered seventy five hundred dollars, and then they put out a tweet just telling Rockstar and GTA to go f themselves. And I would think if you got offered $7,500, if you're somebody who's not really that well-known, I mean, I don't know who this person is, and you don't like it, I think the best next step would be to go to the table, negotiate, and then try to get more money out of it. Because that's generally, I think, how these things work in business. When you get offered something, you don't accept it. You don't like the terms. You go to the offer and you counter it. But this person puts out here, and a lot of people are talking about it. It says, and I'll just pull up the actual tweet itself. And you can see it's from Martin Ware, who, again, I don't know this creator. I don't know this musician, but it says, I was recently contacted by my publishers on behalf of Rockstar Games regarding the possibility of using Temptation on the new Grand Theft Auto 6. Naturally excited about the immense wealth that was about to head my way. I scrolled to the bottom of the email regarding the offer. It was $7,500 for a buyout of any future royalties from the game forever. To put in context, Grand Theft Auto 6 grossed wait for it, $8.6 billion. Uh, but think of the exposure. And he says, go F yourself. So here's the thing. They're offering you $7,500. They want to buy out all the royalties for this. So you're not going to begin anything else. That's where you go back. And you could just say, hey, I want to make a percentage of the amount of sales of this game. And I feel like if they really want the product, they really want your song, they probably would negotiate it. But hey, I've never been offered anything by Rockstar, so I could be wrong on that. This person says, I don't know who you are, but you've probably made the worst decision of your life. $7,500 seems little to you, maybe, but your music could have been part of the most anticipated video game in history. You'll regret it. This says, greedy by nature will end up broke. Do not even look at the profile. And then we continue on here and all the stuff. So basically the way I see it is one exposure could be good, but if you don't care about the exposure at all, if that's not something that gives you any sort of intrinsic value or extrinsic value of your product, of your music, go to the table, negotiate, come back with something else. And maybe they could have taken it. So I feel like this is a very common practice from rockstar for trying to get music into games. They start off low and then you have to negotiate. But that was a story going around, which I thought was kind of ridiculous how it blew up as big as it did 1.1 million views on that one. All right, let's talk about this days gone director is slamming Ben studio for not protecting its legacy in Astrobot. As you know, Astrobot has come out to phenomenal reviews the game looks really good. I, from the second I saw Astro when they first announced it, I said this game is going to be very, very good. And and I was correct on that. It's sitting at like a 94 on Metacritic. And people are saying it's a game of the year. But one of the characters from Days Gone or the main character here from Days Gone is in the Astrobot game. And they have characters from across all of these different franchises. And you have Deacon St. John, who is the guy from the game, being celebrated by Astrobot, being called out here from the Days Gone director because of the way that they portrayed Deacon St. John in the game. And, and here is what John Garvin says. He says, kind of sad that Deke has been reduced to promoting other games. Well done, Ben Studio. Way to protect your legacy. John Garvin has been very outspoken with Days Gone. He's, I mean, I think this all stems from not being able to do a Days Gone 2. We saw the whole story a few years ago from... Instead of greenlighting Days Gone 2, Sony went ahead and took those resources and developers and put them on to the Last of Us remakes, which we've seen so many of them happen. And you can see here, he's continuously here calling it out. They took characters from across multiple franchises. They took characters that are now a part of Xbox first party with like Spyro and stuff and Crash. And they threw it into this game to kind of just give a legacy of PlayStation from the beginning. And if you played the game that came packed in with the PS5, that was all it was all about. It was the PlayStation legacy. You had all the different systems in there. So I think it's pretty cool. But John Garvin here is calling this out, basically saying it's reduced to just a character in another game. 
and nobody cares about it anymore because they have not and more than likely will not be able to make a Days Gone 2. Okay, let's uh, talk about a couple of other things here. We have this, which I think is a great piece of news, and that is the Z2 Extreme chips. Now, if you know anything about the Z2 chips, those are the chips in the PC handhelds, the Asus ROG Ally. One of the worst things about current PC handhelds, which is why I would say... If you haven't picked one up yet, I would absolutely wait until the next generation of PC handhelds come out. It is the battery life. It's abysmal. It basically turns your PC handheld into a console that you have to have plugged in. It takes away that portability. And it looks like that may be changed in the next upcoming versions of these PC handles, which I think is going to be a game changer for this mobile space. AMD confirms that the Z2 Extreme chip aims to boost PC gaming handle battery life by over 300%. Now, if you were to download a AAA game on your Asus ROG Alley, you may get an hour and a half, two hours if you're lucky. And adding 300% to that, I would say if you can get the handheld battery life playing downloaded games, to about four hours that's reasonable and that's what i'm looking for in these next generation pc handhelds but it says here that this week in berlin was the ifa 2024 showcasing a wide range of new consumer technology products and at the show amd confirmed the successor to z1 extreme chip which is powering devices like the lenovo legion go and uses rog ally revolutionizing pc gaming handles and the z2 extreme will be based on strix point with AMD Senior Vice President Jack Wynn reportedly suggesting it will boost high-end performance mode battery life from 45 minutes to three hours. And three, four hours, far more reasonable, even though I would still like to see it more. Like I'd like to see the average be four hours. So that may not be for another generation or so. But if it's boosting the high-end performance mode from 45 minutes to three hours, that is a huge thing. And that's why I'm saying definitely wait for the next gen if you are in the market because I think these will be coming sooner rather than later and i think this will be a game changer for the amount of people that go out and buy these things i think it holds a lot of people back when you're looking at the reviews you're looking at what these things can do and it says that your battery life is extremely low it's one thing i just dislike the most about the, the raw gallery the one that i had was because i would just end up using cloud gaming on it just because the battery would die super fast if i was out on the go and just kind of made the whole point of these which is to be able to download and play AAA games kind of irrelevant when you're just using cloud gaming so i can't wait to see what the next gen is like and how they improve the overall battery life and finally we have some leaks about games that i'm pretty excited for some gameplay now it's older gameplay i think from like 2022 but we have crazy taxi reboot leak here again this comes from ryan from the bronx previously midori showing off early development footage of crazy taxi reboot recorded in 2022 looks like it's a ton of fun obviously still very early lots of assets have not been upgraded and you can see it looks like it is early on in development but just looks fun fast paced different types of cars just mayhem which is what i want from the next crazy tax game so excited for that and there's also some footage that came out for the new shinobi game some leaked footage which i think looks absolutely phenomenal i can't wait for this one this is one of the many reboots that sega is doing i think it's a very smart strategy to bring back these older ips that people have wanted for a while and give them brand new remakes and you can see some of it here game looks great the opening movie and gameplay sequences from the title that is currently in development and again old gameplay so we don't know where it is right now, but I think it looks very, very good. So if you're interested in that, go check out those tweets. He has all of that content there. But if you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. If you're new, hit that subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video.